Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm fine, thank you. How was school? Was school good? Was it bad? Was it okay? Good, good okay. So <coughs> Sorry. And what homework did you have for today? Uh, the, the science and math. Okay, science and maths. Good. Did you complete your homework? Is it finished? Almost finished. Almost finished. Good. Okay. Yeah. Are you good at maths? No. <laughs> okay. You're good at English, though, so that's a good thing. Okay. So we are here with our work. Okay. So here we have some pictures of a person doing some things. And here we have words. So we have bend down, hold out your arms, lie down, lift up your foot, put up your hand, sit down, sit up, stand up, turn over and turn around. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to label the pictures with those words. So what do you think number one is? What does number one look like? Turn around. Okay. I don't think it's turn around. Um, turn over. Yes, turn over. Okay. So if you are lying down, we say turn over. If you are standing up, we say turn around. Okay. So what do you think number two is? Put up hand. Okay, let's see. Turn over. Hold out your arms. Okay, what do you think is number three? Lift up the foot. Good. Okay, number four. Sit up. Okay, it won't be sit up because this is sit up. If I'm sitting like this, then this is sit up. Or if I'm lying down, then it is sit up. But this man's not sitting. He is and sit up not sit up sitting is when you are on your bum now you're not sitting you Stand are up. yes good okay what is number eight bend down not bend down he is on a bed so what do you do on a bed uh, lie down good okay i don't know why okay <coughs> i don't know why eight is there but anyway Okay, what is number five? Oh, bend down. <clears throat> Good, what is number six? Uh, six, sit down, sit down. Good, number seven? Oh, boot, turn around. Number, okay, eight is lie down. Number nine. Can you put up here? 
put up your hand. And number 10. Turn, turn around. Not turn around. We use turn around over here. So what is the last one we have left? Yeah. What is this? Sit up. Good. Okay. So now we are going to choose the correct phrases. Um, so we have John always lifts up his foot or puts up his hand to answer a question in class. Which one is the correct one? Put up his hand. Good. Okay, number two. When you're on a bicycle, don't lift up your foot or bend down before you start moving. Um, lift up. Good, because if you lift up your foot before the bicycle is moving, you're going to fall down. Okay, my little daughter held out her arms or put up her hand so that I could pick her up. Okay, so, okay, not put up your hand. Put up your hand means this. So when a baby is small and a baby wants the mom or the dad to pick them up, the babies go up. So they hold out their arms. Then the mommy will pick them up under the armpit over here, under the shoulder. Okay. I heard someone call my name. So I bent down or turned around and looked. Turn around. Good. He bent down or lay down and picked up his shoes from the floor. Bent down. Very good. Uncle Stanley lay down or stood up on the sofa because he wasn't feeling well. Lay down. Good. Go into the classroom. Sit up, sit down, and get out your books. <coughs> sit down. Good. My mum says my dad keeps turning around or turning over in his sleep and waking her up. Mm. Turning around. Turning over. Remember we said turn around is if you are. Okay, let me move my camera. So if I'm standing, this is turn around. Okay. But if we are laying down, it is turn over. You understand? Yes. Okay. Let me just fix my screen so you can see my face again. Okay. Grammar. Must, mustn't, and needn't. So, needn't is like need not. Okay. 
<coughs> okay. So, table manners around the world. Do you know what table manners are? No. Okay. So, some countries have sort certain rules when it comes to eating. So, let me just bend this down a little bit. So, if we sit, I don't know if you can see, if I put my elbows on a table and I eat supper, it is considered rude in some countries. You're not allowed to put your elbows, these over here, on the table when you eat. You have to eat with your arms off the table. Um, in some countries, it's a good thing to burp after a meal. You know, sometimes when you eat and you um, let wind out through your mouth, you burp, you make the noise. Yes. Okay, some countries it's good to burp after a meal. It shows that the meal was good. In other countries, it's rude to burp after a meal. So every country has slightly different table manners. So things that you have to do around the table. Okay. So we're going to listen and answer the questions. Lesson 7B. Exercise 1. Table manners around the world. Peru. You needn't worry because most of the table manners in Peru are the same as in Europe. But... You mustn't put your hands under the table. Keep them on the table. You must wait until everyone has a drink before drinking. You must say buen provecho when you leave or join the table. It means enjoy your meal. Okay, so these are the table manners for Peru. So this is what you have to do if you join a family in Peru and you have dinner or lunch with the family okay so the first one you must or needn't worry what is the correct answer must it was in the audio. It's needn't. So need not worry. Because most of the table manners in Peru are the same as in Europe. But, okay. So what is the next one? You needn't or you mustn't? You mustn't. Good. And the next one. You, you must. It. Oh, you must. Good. You must. Okay. And then the last one. Very good. Okay. So now we're going to look at the box and look at the answers that we had in exercise one. Okay, so I'll just mark them. Okay. So... Now we need to choose which words go into the blank spaces in the learn this box. Okay, so number one, we use what to express necessity. So something that it is something that is very important to do. Do we use must, needn't, mustn't? Which one? Must. Yes. Good. Okay, we use what to express lack of necessity. So something that isn't necessary, something that's not very important. Is it needn't or mustn't? Mm. 
Mustn't. Okay, it's needn't because needn't means need not. So you don't need, it's almost like saying you don't need to do something. So here, a different word that we could have used is you don't need to worry because most of the table manners in Peru are the same as in Europe. So needn't is another way of saying don't need. Okay. And then we use what to express prohibitation, which means you're not allowed to do something. So something that is very important not to do. What is the last word there that we haven't used? Muslim. Good. Okay. Must and mustn't. Okay. So remember we said we have a positive or an affirmative and a negative. So affirmative is, yes, you can do it. You need to do it. You must do it. And the negative is when we change it and we add the not or the N apostrophe T. Because remember, mustn't is just a contraction, so a smaller version of must not. Okay. So, affirmative is must I go home? You must tell the truth. Must I go to school? Negative, you mustn't tell anybody. They mustn't be late. Okay. And then interrogative. So this is how you ask a question with must or mustn't. So must you leave so early? Mustn't I make soup for dinner? Okay, and then you also get a short answer. So yes, I must. Okay, so we don't often make questions with must. It's more common to use, do you have to? Okay. Do you understand? Yes. Good. Okay. So here is some other table manners. So we use must plus an infinitive. So remember with our verbs, we have verb one, verb two, and verb three, which is your infinitive. So like sleep, slept, slept, sleep. Yeah, sleep, sleep, sleep. Okay, so in some Asian countries, you must eat with your right hand. You must be quiet in the school library. Okay, we use mustn't plus infinitive without to to say that something is prohibited and it is very important not to do it. Okay, so we don't add the word to. So we don't say you mustn't to be late for school. We say you mustn't be late for school. You mustn't use a mobile phone in the cinema. Okay, and then we often use must or mustn't to express rules and laws. So in the UK, you must be 17 to drive a car. You mustn't smoke on airplanes. Okay, then we have the word needn't. So we use needn't without the word to to say that something is not necessary, but it isn't against the rules. So you needn't bring a towel. There are towels at the swimming pool. Like I said, an easier way to say needn't is don't need to. It just makes it a little bit longer. So you don't need to bring a towel. There are towels at the swimming pool. Okay. So now we're going to read the advice for job interviews and rewrite the sentences using must, mustn't, or needn't. Okay. So number one was done for us. It's our example. 
it's necessary for you to shake hands with the interviewer. So we rewrote the sentence to, you must shake hands with the interviewer. Okay. So the next option is, or number two, don't wear casual clothes to an interview. How will we change that to use the word must, mustn't, or needn't? Are you there? Yes, uh, you mustn't. Well, you mustn't wear a cash, casual clothes to an uh, interview. Very good. You mustn't wear casual clothes to an interview. Okay. Number three. It's necessary for you to arrive on time. You must, you must to, you must to arrive on time. Okay, remember we don't need to use the word to, so we're just going to say you must arrive on time. Okay, four, it isn't necessary for you to give very long answers. You needn't. You needn't give a long answer. Okay, you needn't give very long answers. Okay. Don't fold your arms. You mustn't fold your arms. You mustn't fall the arm. Good. It's necessary for you to look the interviewer in the eye. You, you must look at the interview eye. Okay. You can either say you must look at the interviewer or you must look the interviewer in the eye. Okay. And then number seven, don't leave your mobile phone switched on. You mustn't leave the, leave the mobile phone switched on. Leave your mobile phone switched on. Good. Okay. Now we are going to practice writing sentences about your school. We need to use must, mustn't, and needn't. <coughs> we can use phrases from the list below. Okay, so here they gave us some words that we can use, some ideas. So copy your friend's homework. Run in the corridor. Switch off your mobile phone in class. Study English. Stand up when the teacher comes in and wear a uniform. Okay. So can you make sentences using must, mustn't, and some of the words below? You must copy your friend who walk. Did you say you must or you mustn't? Mustn't. Good. So you mustn't. Okay. What is the next one? In as a school, we we mustn't we must study English. 
good. We must study English. Okay, and another one. That's a school we we uh, must wear a uniform. Good. Okay, so it's going to be difficult for you to use the word needn't. Um, but what you can say is at our school, you needn't wear a uniform. Okay, so some schools don't wear uniforms. So some schools you can say you needn't wear a uniform. Okay, now we are going to complete the facts about customs around the world with must mustn't or needn't okay so number one in britain if you are invited for a meal at somebody's home you something take a gift it's very rude not to bring anything Must, mustn't, or needn't. You. Who. Must. Good. In many parts of Asia, you touch or pat somebody on the head. It's considered impolite. So impolite is like rude. Mm -hmm. uh, Mother. Good. If you receive an invitation with RSVP on it, you something reply. Do you know what RSVP means? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So if you get an in invitation, so you get invited somewhere to a wedding or a party, but it's usually big events like a wedding, um, RSVP means you have to reply by a certain date and to a certain person to let them know if you are coming or if you aren't coming. Because especially if you go to a wedding, the person that invited you has to pay for food, they have to pay for the chairs, they have to pay for the tables. So if you're not coming, they don't have to pay for your food because you won't be there. You understand? Yes. Okay, so RSVP, it usually looks like this. Um, they'll usually say, please RSVP by the 20th of May 2023. Contact Angela on 1234567891. Okay. And then that's usually their cell phone number. Okay. So, you must reply. Yes, good. You must reply. In Saudi Arabia, you something use a knife and fork to eat. You can use your fingers if you prefer.
You must. No, they're saying use a knife and fork. You can use your fingers. So you don't need to use a knife and fork. So what word do we use instead of don't need to? Don't need to. Is needn't, remember? Yes. Okay. So you needn't use a knife and fork to eat. You can use your fingers if you prefer. Okay. In many countries, you use your finger to beckon somebody. It's very rude. So that means if I say to you, hey, come here. And I, you know, do this with my finger. It means I am beckoning you. I am calling you. So they're saying doing this is rude. You must. Mustn't. Because remember they're saying... You mustn't use your finger to beckon people. It is rude. So it's not something that they like. In most cultures, you speak with food in your mouth. Swallow the food. So go, swallow. Before you start talking. Okay. So must, mustn't, or needn't. You must. Mustn't. So you mustn't talk with a mouthful of food in between chewing and swallowing. You have to swallow. So chew, chew, chew. Um, 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 um. Swallow. And then talk. Okay. Seven, generally you use formal language in emails to friends. But in business emails, you something use collo colloquial language. Okay, so what is the first one? You must. Needn't. So if you are sending a message to your friend, your friend is not your teacher, he's not a boss, he's not um, a family member. So you don't need to be formal. You don't need to be, hi, Mr. Bob, hope all is well. I hope this email finds you well. I would like to know, are you busy on the 16th of February? But... When so when we speak to a friend, we'll send, "Hey, what's up? How are you doing? Are you busy on the 16th? I'm having a birthday party. You want to come?" Instead of being formal. Okay, but then in business emails, you something use colloquial language. Okay. Must. Okay. Mustn't. Colloquial language is friendly language or informal language. So it's, hey, what's up? How are you? Cool. Not a problem. That is colloquial language. It's everyday language and it's the way that you speak with your friends. You don't, you won't really go to a boss once you finish school, once you get a job, you're not going to go to your boss and say, what's up? You're going to be like, hi, sir. How are you? Good, thanks. And you're going to go and do your job. You understand? Do you understand or did I lose you? Hmm. No, I understand. Okay. Okay, write notes about how to be polite when you go to somebody's house for a meal in your country. 
<laughs> use the ideas below to help you. Okay. So arrive exactly on time. Belch at the table. You know, I said burp, burp, belch. It means the same thing. It's that noise that comes out of your mouth. If you drink something gassy, if you eat, you belch. Bring a gift. Eat everything that you are given. Eat quietly. Eat with your fingers. Eat with a knife and fork. Keep. Remember, I said keep your elbows off the table. And sit up straight. Okay. So in Vietnam, what are some of the things that we have to do when you have dinner at somebody's house? So I have to okay so is it rude to arrive late do you have to be on time no okay is it rude to belch at the table mm, yes Okay, so then you can say you mustn't belch at the table. If I come to your house for dinner, do I have to bring a gift? No. Okay. Do I have to eat everything that I'm given? No. Okay. Must I eat quietly or am I allowed to talk? Okay, so am I allowed to talk or must I just eat quietly? Okay. Am I allowed to eat with my fingers or must I eat with a knife and fork? Or chopsticks? What must I eat with? My fingers, a knife and fork, chopsticks. Chopsticks. Okay. Good. Okay, giving and receiving. So, during the year, we have special occasions. There's All Saints Day, there's birthdays, Christmas, Easter, Father's Day, Halloween, Mother's Day, name days, New Year's Eve, St. Nicholas's Day, Twelfth Night, Valentine's Day, and wedding anniversaries. Okay, so we will talk about this when we come back because we have less than a minute. So let's end the lesson here and then come back for your last five minutes. Okay. See you now.